أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى أهله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد You guys welcome to another session of Sunnah Fix Today joining us for Sunnah Fix is Brother Faraz Shuja Brother Faraz did I get your name last name right? Shuja is that what it is? Yep yep that's right Actually I've got a long name uh, so <laughs> we have a typical alias in Hyderabad so we have a lame and then there's a alias name well, well. like for us is... name <laughs> yeah subhanallah you guys brother faraz was a coach for us during hard detox series that we did at ism and recently he was our student through core academy taking the course dismantling doubts you know faraz but when i saw you in team abu bakr man you were killing it with the answers and i was like when i saw that i was like yo team abu bakr is taking home the prize and mm-hmm. uh, Mashallah, mashallah, Allah bless you. Uh, folks, Brother Faraz is a family, is a family man, father of two daughters, and um, hands down, one of the most knowledgeable young people I know in Milwaukee. And uh, something I really admire, Faraz, by, is that despite the mm-hmm. fact that you have a full-time job and you have a family, you're still seeking knowledge. You're still taking courses. You're still coming on Sunnah Fix, and you want to give back to the community and work with the youth. You know, I'm really, I, I admire that a lot. May Allah bless you. Uh, may yeah. Allah keep you strong. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Barakallahu feek. So, Faraz Bhai, we are covering the famous book of Imam Bukhari known as Al-Adab Al-Mufrad. The whole book is dedicated to becoming the best version of ourselves. And every night, we just cover one hadith. So today, we're starting hadith 235 from the chapter Kitab Al-Ma'roof, the book of appreciated deeds book of deeds that are widely recognized and appreciated so hadith 235 comes to us from actually ibn abbas radiyallahu anh, where ibn abbas says that during the khilafah of umar bin khattab radiyallahu anh, the prophet sallam has passed away and umar bin khattab is now in charge during his reign umar bin khattab made an announcement a very interesting announcement he's like let's go on a field trip so he's like bina. basically he's like y'all let's go out on a trip we gotta go see our people so likely they're in Medina, well, they're in Medina for sure, because that's the capital of the Islamic world. And they probably want to go to Mecca to visit family or Quraysh. So Umar bin Khattab is like, let's go. So Ibn Abbas tells us that when the trip started, I was all the way in the back of the caravan with my travel buddy. And both of us were like way behind. We're playing catch up and everybody else is ahead of us. And who is his travel buddy? Oh. His travel buddy is none other than the famous companion of the Prophet Sayyidul Qurra Al-Ansari. And I am, of course, referring to Ubay ibn Ka'b ibn Qaysin radiyallahu anh. Ubay is so awesome for us, boy, that today, inshallah, we're going to dedicate the entire session just to the life of, Umar, uh, of Ubay ibn Ka'b radiyallahu anh, a superstar amongst the companions of the Prophet. Like all the Sahaba are stars in their own right. He's a superstar from amongst the stars. And what was his mm-hmm. specialty that he was known for? You guys, what I'm about to share right now about Ubay ibn Ka'b, if you forget everything I'm going to share today, I hope you guys remember this. Like I hope next time, two months from now, you randomly hear the name of Ubay in some khutbah. I hope you remember this fact that I'm about to share with you because that's what defines him. This is a specialty right here, and that is Ubay ibn Ka'b was one of the greatest scholars of Quran from amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yo, that's no joke because companions understood the Arabic language. That was their, that was their natural tongue. Air became easy for them. And we all know Sahaba took their time learning the Quran. Amongst them, Ubay ibn Ka'b is in the major leagues. Well, everybody else, as you can say, He's in the major leagues along with some other companions and others, you can say, are in the minor league. Ubay ibn Ka'ab, he knew his Qur'an, his Qira'a, his tafsir down pat. I'm not saying this, Faraz, but this endorsement comes straight from the Prophet ﷺ, where uh, the Prophet ﷺ says in a hadith in Bukhari, that istaqra'u al-Qur'ana min arba. Learn Qur'an from four. Learn Qur'an from one of these four experts one of them is Ubay ibn Ka'ab. 
like he is mashallah like being vouched like the certificate uh, um, approval certificate is coming straight from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now faraz bhai i'm going to ask a question uh if you know the answer don't answer right away because we want to give an opportunity to the audience but if they can't mm -hmm. answer you got to you got to help them out you're the lifeline so you guys check this out this is a fresh merch that you have an opportunity to win once in a lifetime opportunity well i shouldn't say once in a lifetime but it's a unique opportunity for cinefix we don't do this a lot but if you can answer this put your answer so you guys i said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there are four that you want to learn quran from i gave you one of them someone give me at least two out of the three remaining names and please put it in one message put it down now you can start now and the first person to get it right inshallah will be shipping out the fresh merch that's coming straight off the printer last time sister sofia once sister sofia you're going to have to sit this one out i'm sorry we're just trying to distribute the merch as widely as possible you guys i need two more names who are the experts of the quran from amongst the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding whom the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said go to them they are the experts they are the masters so let's see if uh, anybody is able to uh, figure out the remaining to answer uh, i hope people are not asking shay google because uh, we want you to rely on your own knowledge yeah i'm not seeing any answers here let's wait yes we're going to give 5 5 seconds and then uh, brother faraz is going to have to steal the show and uh, nobody getting no merch 5 4 3 to i mean i know i asked a difficult question because i'm being super cheap with our merch well 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 okay so, so zaid ibn thabit so zaid is not on this particular list but zaid is a very good candidate because he was part of the compilation of the quran um but zaid is not one of them sorry to burst, burst the bubble um anybody else abdul ibn masrud so a lot of people said abdul ibn masrud okay so we got the first well, at least second person on the list unlocked very good there is a third now third and fourth are very difficult unfortunately they're not widely known amongst the general masses of the muslims 3 2 1 okay time's up y'all i got to give it to other people who are on this list third is muhad ibn jabal and number four is hudayfa um hudayfa so bin yamana not hudayfa ibn yaman this is a different hudayfa this his name is actually abu sal um ya salim maula abi hudayfa that's his full name actually so these are the four individuals you guys um inshallah there will be more opportunities to earn the merch don't worry we're going to be firing off more questions next time inshallah stay tuned in so faraz bhai back to our discussion the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like in another hadith in tirmidhi the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said like he straight up he's like aqra'uhum li kitabillahi abdul ubay ibn kar the most educated person when it comes to the quran especially from amongst the ansar is ubay ibn kar can you imagine the prophet is vouching for him certifying him licensing him like you know the prophet sallam he's the destination of revelation and he's the one giving the compliment like first by do you watch football let me just not assume stuff do you watch football uh yeah occasionally okay so you know like when we watch Aaron Rodgers play and you're like sitting there you're like yo he's a goat and you're giving him compliment you know that's nice you know you're giving the compliment mm -hmm. that's great i'm sure he appreciates it but you know when tom brady pays him a compliment and tom brady is on record saying this he's like Aaron Rodgers is so fun to watch so good that when he's playing mm -hmm. I stay a blade just to watch. When a, a real goat plays pays you a compliment, that's when it hits deep, you know? Here the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, like the prophet of God saying, "Man, who they, you know, uh Ubay ibn Ka'ab, that's the real deal." I don't know if you wanted to uh share any reactions. Yeah, I think the interesting thing about Ubay ibn Ka'ab was he he was in Medina, right? So he accepted Islam while and not seeing the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself but before that when uh uh musa ibn umair yes uh, started preaching in medina and that is when he accepted so that subhanallah something which you know he accepted even before seeing the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just by listening to the uh, the message from musa ibn umair that's beautiful and then he was one of those uh, i believe sahabis who went uh, from the khazraj tribe who went for um, giving the second pledge of aqaba mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, to the mm-hmm. Prophet mm-hmm. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Makkah. Y'all, these are some amazing facts uh, Brother Faraz is dropping. Please get these down. Ubay ibn Ka'ab accepted Islam before having seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Later, the Prophet moves to Medina and now his faith is further reinforced. So please remember that as well. As far as by, let me share the first story I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, this one is one of the coolest things you'll come to know about Ubay. And wallahi, this astounds me. When I came across this narration, hadith comes in Bukhari and Muslim. That the Prophet wasallam came to Ubay ibn Ka'ab. And he said to Ubay, Allah has asked me to recite the Quran specifically to you. In one narration of Muslim, the Prophet comes to Ubay and he says, Ubay, Allah has asked me to specifically recite Lam yakunil ladheena kafaroo min ahl al-kitab, Surah Al-Bayira. Allah has asked me to recite this surah specifically to you. Ubay, when he heard this, he said, Ya Rasulullah, Allahu sammani? Allah mentioned me by name? Like I was actually mentioned by name? By God? The Prophet Sallallahu said, yes. And Ubay broke down in tears on the spot. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Yep. It's amazing when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is, you know, mentioning from the seven heavens. That's so that's the first way. What, what is Ubay doing that God is like, yo, before you release the Quran to public, let Ubay hear this first. Let, give him the priority access because he's going to appreciate it. He's going to appreciate mm-hmm. it. What is he doing with the Quran? What kind of relationship does he have to deserve this kind of a backstage pass, if you will? You don't know? Isn't this remarkable? Yeah, I, th- I think he was also the uh, one of the Katibun Wahi describes in Medina, like he was like the first scribe uh, of the Quran, and so yes. he was very close to the Prophet It's amazing. Well. You know, I give this analogy uh, for Azbai to help appreciate what's happening here. Like one of the members of our core leadership team, Hamza Hamdan, super funny guy, very witty, hilarious, right? So whenever mm-hmm. I come across a meme on the internet. I usually send it to him first because I'm like, he's going to appreciate it. He's going to appreciate it. I similarly, like, I'm super obsessed with, like, personal development books and self-help books. So, like, when I go on TikTok, you know what TikTok does, right? It sends me Gary Vee videos. Like, send it to him. He'll appreciate it. Send him some Jeff Bezos, you know? Mm-hmm. So, here, Ubay bin Krab has such an incredible relationship with the Quran that Allah's, like, recited to him. He knows, like... He has the expertise, the experience to appreciate this, yo. SubhanAllah. And you can be sure, Faraz Bhai, that he's not one of those individuals for whom Quran is collecting dust on their shelves. You know, stowed away in the glove compartment behind receipts and pens and ketchup packets. You know, like, this is not one of those individuals that hangs the Quran, you know, behind the cash register in your gas station, even though everything you're selling or a lot of what you're selling is hot. You know, this Quran... Ubay himself tells us, Faraz Bhai, the kind of relationship with the Qur'an he had, he says, I would finish the Qur'an, the entire Qur'an, every eight nights. SubhanAllah. Yeah. You know how many juz a day that is, Faraz Bhai? Three, over three, three and a half. Yeah, almost 3.75, so almost four juz he's doing per night. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah. So... That's the first story I wanted to share with you guys. Um, the second story. Uh, once the Prophet وسلم, decided to quiz Ubay ibn Ka'ab. And uh, <laughs> hadith comes in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet approached him. Like when the Prophet of God is testing you, you're already at a different level. So the Prophet came to him and he says, Ayyu ayatin fi kitab The Prophet asked Ubay, what is the single greatest verse of the Qur'an to you? Hmm. No. Farzman, you know what he answered, right? Before he gave the answer, although he knows the answer, first thing he says, Allahu wa rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. You know? Showing his humility there, you know, modesty in front of the Prophet Isn't it amazing? Like, speak he's up. like, how can I speak on a religious matter when the Prophet is standing there? Like, he doesn't mm-hmm. right off the bat flex his knowledge. Have you seen that? Like, somebody will be sitting in the gatherings of scholars and really trying hard to, like, showcase their knowledge and how much they know and the history they have on a lockdown. Here, mm-hmm. 
Subhanallah, it reminds me of the story of Imam Malik that once Imam Malik was sitting with his teacher and a visiting scholar came and asked Imam Malik's teacher a question. Imam Malik's teacher gave an answer. And then the visiting scholar turns to Imam Malik and he's like, what do you think? And Imam Malik's like, what do I think? Teacher, my teacher already spoke. He already gave the answer. So when the teacher heard this, the teacher is like, no, 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 I give you permission. Please speak your mind. And then Imam Malik gave the answer. Yo, the humility, you know? I, I say this, Faraz, by the less you try to impress, more impressive you are, you know? True. So um, this was something so remarkable about Ubay. He's like, he knows the answer. And I'm sure, like, we all get competitive and we all want to, like, kind of win the trivia. I'm sure many of our hands would have just shot up. They're like, Ya Rasulullah, I got this. What is the single greatest verse of the Quran? He's like, Allah knows best. Allah and his messenger know best. I'm not going to put myself out there religiously when the messenger of God, he's the answer key. So the Prophet repeated the question. He's like, no, 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 no. What is the single greatest verse of the Quran to you? And this time, Ubay ibn Ka'ab. Now, Faraz, you know the answer, yes? And hopefully everybody else here. Ayat al-Kursi, yeah. Ayat al-Kursi. He's like, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. He just dropped the answer. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's crazy. We all know the answer because Ubay knew the answer. And Ubay, that's what he said to the Prophet Wasallam. And you know what the Prophet did? The Prophet Wasallam kind of hit him in the chest. That's kind of how like you high five back in the days. And the Prophet mm -hmm. was like, congrats on your knowledge. Hats off to you on your brilliant knowledge. SubhanAllah. Once again. Because this was even before the Prophet Wasallam told him. It was, yes. you know, we know it because of that hadith. So he knew it. Even before that, subhanAllah. Isn't that his... amazing? Like, he has a Quran down, he can analyze like that. You know? Mm -hmm. it make his, reach mm -hmm. his own conclusion and be spot on to a point the Prophet is like, checks you off and certifies and validates your answer. Mm -hmm. um, final thing I want to share with all of you. Um, and this final thing really brings Ubayr ibn Ka'ab to the 21st century, y'all. So, check this out. When uh, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, became the Khalifa, and uh, Umar bin Khattab had so much love for Ubay bin Ka'ab that uh, Faraz bai, uh, Umar bin Khattab used to say, pointing at Ubay, he used to say, Hada Sayyidul Mu'minin. This is the leader of the Muslims, right, right here. Mm -hmm. like a spiritual leader of the Muslimi. So when Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anh, became the Khalifa, at his time, the way Tarawih was being done is that in the Masjid of the Prophet there will be multiple groups. And each group would have their own Imam. And they're doing their own thing. Now that Umar bin Khattab is a Khalifa, he sees that everybody is still praying in their own little groups and cliques. He's like, why not unite them behind one Imam? Now the Prophet did not do this. Why? Because the Prophet was always careful of doing something as a community. Because when you do something collectively as a community, there's a fear that it might become an obligation. A revelation would come down that since they're so now used to doing this as a community, let's turn this into an obligation. He didn't want his ummah to go through a hardship. He didn't want his ummah to go through another obligation. So people prayed tarawih low-key in their own little circles. But Umar bin Khattab, now he's a khalifa. And the Prophet has passed away. No more revelation is going to come down. So that fear is gone. So Umar bin Khattab is like, yo, why not combine everyone behind one imam? Guess who he chose to be the leader? The first official tarawih leader. Mm -hmm. And of course, our man Ubay I mean, ibn Ka'ab. The one who knew the Quran the most. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and I, I got I to gotta squeeze this in. For all of you lovers of eight rakars of Taraweeh, Hadith comes in Abu Dawood and Musannaf of Abdul Razak and Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba. I'm just putting it out there that Ubay ibn Ka'ab, the first leader of Taraweeh, with the consent of Umar bin Khattab, he led the people in prayer in 20 rakars of Taraweeh. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Just putting it out there, folks. FYI. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know, uh, Farzbe, there's a real chance that anyone who leads Tarawih or who has been leading Tarawih since the time of Ubay as the official Tarawih leader and people praying behind him, he's getting the commission for all the good deeds that are being earned in that regard because he kind of set the trend. You know, True. he started the process. Amazing. Amazing. So you guys, lesson for us, bottom line for us is, let us renew our commitment to the Book of Allah. Um, let's make two small goals, y'all, that we're going to recite something small, something manageable, something, something sustainable, even if it's one page a day. 
even if it's two pages every week and if that's what you can manage with your time let us commit the first thing i recommend is commit to some portion of the reading of the quran even though it's small and secondly sign up for some tafsir series or podcasts if you're looking for some really amazing options my teacher ustad murphy has an amazing series brilliant on tafsir of surah maryam you can find it on spotify just look up kalam podcast surah maryam ustad murphy you're going to have surah maryam entirely there in our sisterly group core sisterly sisters exclusively for them we're going to be doing something called quran conversations where we're going to be inshallah accessing allah's book and showing the beauty of it and appreciation of it so you can get more out of your prayers so if you're looking for resources dm us we got you we'll hook you up inshallah we got to commit to allah's book friends by any advice you have inshallah. on this front um anything you sh- you can share from your own personal schedule or regimen Yep yeah definitely i mean it's uh, really important for us to get connected to the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's uh, any and spy, any advice for for all... that you mm-hmm. have yeah i'm any sorry spe- can you repeat that specific, your voice is kind of breaking up tip any specific tip or anything you have that you can share beneficial in terms of being consistent on this front uh yeah i mean consistency is the key basically so i and i think in uh, in a some tradition there's a specific time right after maghrib prayer which is mm. uh, good for learning and for attaining knowledge so i think that would be the time where we could you know uh, read at least half a juz or a juz every day inshallah that's beautiful you know tying it to a prayer y'all that is a nice way of achieving consistency after maghrib every time without a miss and um i end this session today with some advice from ubay ibn ka'ab himself where someone came to him literally had he comes in uh, the narration comes in abu naim's hilya a man came to him he's like Oh, Ubay, yeah, Ubay. Oh, Sini, give me some amazing advice. Give me some like parting advice, if you will. And Ubay bin Kaab said, so beautiful. He's like, "Ittakhid kitab Allahi imama. Let Quran be your lead." And then he goes on to say, "And let Quran be your judge, and let Quran be your sage." What does he say? He's like, "Let Quran be your lead. Let it guide your lifestyle." and let quran be your judge let quran decide what's right and what's wrong and let quran be your sage let quran be where you get your life advice from let quran be your counselor counselor and your therapist why he goes on to say in this advice because this is the legacy of your prophet this is what he left behind and then he says so beautiful on the day of judgment quran will be your best lawyer and your best defense on the day of judgment quran will be your best lawyer and your best defense mm-hmm. your best witness so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we commit to his book in some shape or form that is consistent sustainable for us the most beloved deeds to allah are consistent those small wa in qalla as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said because i hope this inspires you that we can this inspires you to return back to allah's book let us take the quran off of our shelves let us dust it off and uh, let's put it to good use yeah there, there's an interesting comment here uh it says like the quran needs to be kept somewhere where you can see easily accessible you know so the moment the minute you see it reminds you so that would be a good tip solid and tip. then uh, the, the other thing was uh, i was listening the other days uh, the sahaba if you were to look at them there were very few of them who were hafiz al quran in terms of the number like some narrations say 4 or 25 whatever it was a less number and the reason why the scholars say was like they implemented whatever they learned first and then they went on to the other mm-hmm. aya that's powerful so, subhanallah you know tying to your point that you know, it should be your guide and that's amazing ibn masrud mm-hmm. used to say for us by that for the companions of the prophet sallam memorization was actually heavy acting upon mm-hmm. it was easy but a time will come where memorization will be light and acting upon it will be heavy Towards the end of times, memorization will be like you got Hafiz memorizing four pages a day, like dropping it, but acting upon it will be hard. You know, it's like holding on to charcoal. Subhanallah. And mm-hmm. we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He uh, brings us closer to His book and Amen. make it a part, a guide, a light for us. Amin ya Rabbi alamin. Barakallahu fiqum y'all for tuning in for another session. Amen. Inshallah, um, I will see you guys next Thursday. Faraz Bay, thank you so much for making time from your busy schedule. So I'd love to have you uh, thank you for having me. Love to have you once again inshallah. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam y'all take care.